everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I am Brooke Acroft. I am a local Reiki master and holistic herbalist. I um, am doing a presentation today on herbal allies for the nervous system and healing the seven chakras. So what that will entail is talking a little bit about what I do um, as an energy worker and healer. I um, will get into a little bit of information on Reiki and energy work and going over the seven chakras, which is what we use in Reiki healing. So I will describe them a bit and I will also weave um, different herbs we can incorporate in healing those seven chakras. So we're also going to cover the nervous system um, because it's important when we're dealing with energy work and specifically for these herbal allies I'll be talking about today. Um, so it's going to be a beautiful weaving of energy work and herbalism and a discussion on the nervous system. Um, so before I get into that, this is the name of my practice, White River Healings. Um, it's where I first became a Reiki master. I was just doing Reiki here in the Portland area um, at the Everett House, if anybody's familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I really miss it. Um, then COVID happened and we all kind of been forced to <laughs> work from home. Um, so I've been doing online uh, virtual Reiki and holistic herbalism through um, the online platform. Um, hopefully that changes soon. Seems like things are starting to open up and I can get a space and practice there again. Um, but yeah, White River Healings is the name of my business. Um, and this, these are a few pictures of me in my happiest place before I get into a little bit of my own personal history, I think. Um, like we were mentioning early, earlier, storytelling is really important um, and something I use often in my practice. I think sharing stories is healing and some of the best medicine, especially when we can be together in community with each other. Um, I really love um, the gifts storytelling can bring. Um, so I will share a little bit about my story as I stare at pictures of me in my happy place, because <laughs> uh, we're gonna go down a little bit of a darker road. <laughs> um, so yeah, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm having this conversation is kind of, you know, relates to what I've been through. So um, I was born into a chaotic upbringing um, where the energy was you know, a little unstable. Um, there was a lot of anger in the home, a lot of yelling, screaming. Um, there was addiction. Um, it was kind of me as a little girl, like walking on eggshells because I never knew, you know, who was gonna blow up or, you know, what was gonna go down energetically. Um, so my nervous system was always really sensitive um, I grew up being really, um, nervous and, you know, easily afraid, um, so I lived in a lot of fear, um, you know, within the home and I, I, I didn't necessarily have, um, perhaps the appropriate mentor or guide, you know, growing up, um, to kind of help me settle into my energy and relax, um, so I didn't really have many tools as a child and an early adult. Um, so I, um, it, that kind of led me to, you know, my teenage years being really angry and, you know, not really understanding my situation or why it was the way it was, you know, victimhood mentality kind of comes into play a little bit um, here. Um, so, you know, I got really self-destructive. Um, I definitely would um, abuse alcohol and drugs. Um, 
just because I kind of could never find steady, stable ground, you know, within my own energy um, and the energy in the home. So yeah, I let it out. I um, was, yeah, really rebellious and uh, just, you know, definitely, um, you know, had some moments where I was contributing to the diminishment of my health um, through certain experiences as a teen. Um, so yeah, that um, kind of led me into uh, developing my first panic attack when I was 18 years old. Um, and that experience was really interesting because um, I didn't know what was happening if anybody has ever had a panic attack you kind of can understand, um, you feel like you're dying. It's, it had never happened before. I had no idea what was happening. Um, it was kind of happened all of a sudden at work, um, where I started getting a really loud ringing in my ear and started to lose vision, you know, sweating, hands cramping in. I mean, I, I thought I was dying. Um, I had no idea what a panic attack was. Um, I finally was, after a few minutes of kind of deep breathing and trying to calm myself down, I was able to um, get my vision back and uh, my hands kind of returned to normal and I was able to call someone for help. We went straight to the emergency room um, and, you know, again, I was very scared. I didn't know what was going on. Um, I thought something was wrong with me. Um, you know, maybe it was cancer or something was going, you know. Um, so I do remember uh, the doctor came in and it, I just felt <laughs> like I wasn't really being heard or understood. I felt kind of like a nuisance almost, the way the doctor made me feel. It was like I felt rushed, like I had to, they had to go on to the next patient or, um, and you know, it, I think it was like a two minute conversation um, of him telling me that I had a panic attack and briefly explaining what it was and then uh, handing me a paper on um, a breathing technique of how to cope when you are feeling panicked. So, you know, that whole experience um, really shut me down. <laughs> it definitely felt a bit like um, a slap in the face. Um, I felt, yeah, unheard, kind of devalued. I felt rushed, um, even though I knew what was going on in my body was a really serious thing. Um, but I should say that I, that was my one experience in a hospital. I am not against the medical field or modern medicine. I believe that I, everything has a place and and a time and it saves lives and you know just for me in that instance that one experience it just did not serve me very well um, and um, that sort of led to me slowly opening the doors of my mind of a more natural approach to handle my situation so I started to be interested in in herbs for healing. I saw different herbal remedies I would read about in the library or research online, certain things would pop up. So it kind of was like, you know, sparking my interest. My brother was a gardener and very, and a botanist and into plants and I learned a lot from him and he would actually make his own tinctures, um, which I had no idea what a tincture was at the time. So I was asking all sorts of questions and definitely a curiosity was sparking at this point in time um, but you know I still was very young and you know didn't really know or have the resources to you know find stable ground um, so I continued um, those negative habits within my early adulthood um, and then when I was in my early to mid 20s I lost my dad um, very suddenly and very tragically um so you know on top of the nervous system issues you know you add grief and shock to that um it just put me in a really dark place i was also in an abusive relationship at the time 
So that didn't help things very much either. Um, and within the next two years, I lost a former partner and a very good friend of mine to suicide. Um, and then a year later, I lost my best friend to a really awful, just freak accident. Um, so it was kind of, you know, the three people closest to me were gone in a matter of two years. Um, and, you know, even though my, my home life, my upbringing was a little unstable, my dad was sort of the one that, maybe the only one that kind of understood me, like that I was different and kind of understood my needs a little more than everyone else. So we were close, we did have a really special bond and, you know, that hit me hard and, you know, I was upset for a really long time and just continued, you know, down this vicious cycle of, you know, self-destruction. Um, so uh, that kind of led me to get to a breaking point, right? We all have it. Um, there's only so much someone could take. You know, it was kind of rock bottom. I knew I had to get out of this abusive relationship. I always sort of like had, um, you know, a part of myself that I could connect with to kind of pick myself up. So when I was younger, you know, my family always used to joke because I had an imaginary friend and her name was Brooke. <laughs> you know, how original. But I really do believe that was like me communicating with my higher self. And when I was younger, I always, I would dream of angels. Um, so I was always connected to that spiritual realm through dreaming and lucid dreaming. You know, I was able to control what would happen and communicate with these higher beings in my dreams. Um, so that was a, a good escape and that kind of always led that curiosity and me being able to eventually connect with the higher realms. Um, so yeah, that was um, kind of what led me to realize I needed something that I had, to, I had to be in charge and I had to um, figure out a way to stop having panic attacks, you know, stop drinking and abusing drugs and partying all the time, you know, because I was working so hard and I was partying really late. So, you know, my adrenals were shot, my nervous system was shot, my health was starting to diminish. Um, I developed so many things within each system would go wrong kind of one after the other. You know, it started with um, irregular menstrual cycles um, and my reproductive organs were starting to shut down. Then it later uh, turned into kidney stones. Um, and then, uh, you know, I had uh, gut and stomach issues. Um, so it kind of was like one thing after the other, my body telling me, you need to relax, you need to ground your energy, you need to center and regulate your nervous system. So um, I went to a free class at the local library on transcendental meditation. And I had come across it before. I had read some things. David Lynch um, is an artist and director that I really loved. Um, and he has a, a transcendental meditation foundation. It's called the David Lynch Foundation. And he would talk about it a lot. And I, you know, something about a speech, you know, I was watching online really spoke to me. And I knew it was something I needed. So. I went to this free class on transcendental meditation and it definitely sparked something. It was definitely one of those aha moments because there were two teachers. There was a husband and a wife and the husband kind of went into the scientific, you know, medical statistics and research on how the TM, um, you know, helps with depression, anxiety, ADHD, you know, he kind of listed and went through all the medical studies and all of the new research that was coming up on the, um, you know, positive effects of transcendental meditation. And then his wife, for the second part of the presentation, got into the more energetic level of, you know, what meditation does for someone's energetic body, which we'll go over today. Um, so it was, yeah, this beautiful weaving of science and energy that spoke to me and um, from that point on, I, I was trained in, in transcendental meditation. I worked with uh, my teachers on educating people about it and the benefits and effects of it. Um, so I worked with people one-on-one -on -one 
And that kind of led me to, you know, or it led to the spiritual doors just opening wider and wider. That uh, brought me to Reiki and discovering energy work. Um, so I went and was attuned to my Reiki levels one and two in Rhinebeck, New York at Omega Institute. And that was a beautiful healing experience. Um, you know, I had only experienced Reiki a few times before I was attuned, but those few times were enough for me to know I need this in my life. Um, so I remember the attunement process, you know, there were like 120 other people in the room and I was kind of, you know, our Reiki master was going around attuning everyone and I was one of the last to be attuned. Um, and he was behind me and I, and this was just level one, there's three different levels which we'll go over, but um, I sobbed, I just broke down, you know, like hyperventilating, crying, but in a really beautiful, cathartic way, you know, it was, it was like all of this grief that I had stuck in my body just released as soon as the Reiki touched me. Um, so, you know, it was, you know, all of the grief that was stored, but also tears of joy. It was like this beautiful healing experience. It was quite profound. You know, I had never experienced anything like that at that point. Um, so yes, Reiki is so beautiful and uh, something we'll definitely get into. And that eventually led me to just explore more. I bought all the books and went to all the workshops and classes and just gained as much spiritual knowledge and wisdom as I could on, you know, energy and um, the nervous system and then eventually uh, holistic herbalism, which I attended the holistic uh, clinical herbalist program here in Portland at Vital Ways Institute um, and had an amazing experience um, with that. Um, the really awesome thing about herbalism is you are, there's so much to learn and you'll never stop learning. I mean, there are, you know, as many plants as there are people, in the, you know, it's like, just, it's just like you're learning a new person each time you're studying a plant. So it's, there's so much to them and it's such an intricate, beautiful science that connects us to our mother, to earth. Um, so that whole experience was really fascinating and I'm so happy to like finally be incorporating everything I learned and helping people um, through their struggles. Um, so that is a little bit about me and how I came to be here doing this. Um, sorry. So yeah, we will, oh, before I go here, I actually want to just go over briefly a quick talk about the nervous system. Um, just so people kind of have an idea, you know, what we're working with when we do this work. Um, so it's basically like our, our body's command center, right? Um, it controls our responses to the world around us. Um, it really controls everything, kind of like I was mentioning. With all of the ailments I was experiencing, it's like it's all nervous system dysregulation. It affects all of our internal organs. Um, so its activity controls our ability to move, breathe, you know, see, think, and so much more. So it is such a crucial part, um, piece to the healing process. So usually when people refer to the nervous system, they refer to the two branches, which are the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic is sort of like our energize and move state, you know, it's when like we have appropriate brain power to do tasks and, you know, gain the right exercise for our body. Um, and we have a happy mindset while we're working and moving. Um, so that's the sympathetic. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is our heal and nourish state. This is where we are able to rest, dream, meditate, um, you know, just being a conscious person and also being able to sleep peacefully. So these are all examples of um, when our parasympathetic nervous system is working well. And in order to live a healthy, vital life, we need a balance of both, right? So um, yeah, what throws the nervous system off? Stress. Um, 
And it's important to acknowledge, um, especially right now, that stress is universal. <laughs> you know, it's we all experience it um, at certain times, and you know, it's something that you know is just all around us. Um, you know, being a human right now in the 21st century is pretty stressful for a lot of people. So, you know, there are plenty of ways to support stress. Um, and, you know, that could be eating nourishing food or having the right exercise routine for your body, yoga, meditation, um, having a connection with community and your family and your friends, you know, healthy relationships. There's all sorts of ways, um, you know, we can regulate our stress. But today we're going to be focusing on how to heal stress um, through the chakras with Reiki. And we're going to go over seven different allies, plant allies, to help um, us through stress as well. So let's get into this slide here. So I'm going to go over, whoops, actually, yeah, we'll do this one first, um, the seven chakras. Um, the chakras are, in, in Reiki and Ayurvedic medicine, the chakras are seven different energy centers. Um, it's, they are the energy centers where we store different emotions and experiences and feelings. Um, it starts at the root and goes up to the crown, so here, if you can see it, we have um, the root chakra is at the bottom and it's associated with the color red. Um, and that's kind of, these are the main the themes listed here, if you can see them. So survival is the main theme of the root chakra. The second chakra going up um, just below the navel is the sacral chakra associated um, with the color orange. So that, the main theme is sexuality, but there are others that we'll talk about. Um, going up to the third chakra, um, it's our, the center of our chakra system, so it's our solar plexus associated by the color yellow, and that is where we hold our power, right in the center. Um, the fourth is our heart chakra, and that is, brings on the color green, and that is where our love is stored. The fifth is the throat, and that is associated by the color blue. And that is where we are able to communicate. So communication is the main, the main theme of the throat chakra. And then the, um, the sixth chakra is our third eye chakra. And that's usually indigo or purple. Um, and that is where our intuition is stored. And the sixth is the crown, usually at the top or over just above the head. Um, the colors associated with that are usually purple or white. Um, so that's just a main visual going over the chakras and the colors. Um, so yeah, when we are working with the chakras, we are um, moving energy through. So that'll kind of segue into my conversation on Reiki and what exactly it is, because some people might not know. Um, so Reiki is a Japanese healing art. Um, it is spirit guided energy. Um, so Rei is translated to universal wisdom and Ki is translated to life force energy. So it's basically life force energy being poured into the individual through a light, gentle, hands-on approach. Um, you have to be initiated into the levels of Reiki and attuned. So it's an attunement process. Like I mentioned earlier, there's usually three levels, um, levels one and two, and then the master level. So um, level one, you're able to harness that energy for yourself. And level two, you can share with others and even teach. And then the third level, the master level, you know, you can teach and, you know, kind of do what I do, share it with others and teach people Reiki and attune them. So, um, yeah, it is a very gentle, um, I use it intuitively, you know, um, Reiki masters vary um, a lot. And over the years, it's kind of become more of a bigger thing. I know there's, you know, um, 
fire reiki and all sorts of different things that were added on over time. I'm trained in traditional Usui Reiki. It's Mikao Usui who founded Reiki um, in the early 20th century. So I kind of am um, taught in the traditional method, but um, it's intuitive. So, you know, you can add, um, you know, more healing modalities to, to the practice if you like. So when I'm working with someone, it's basically, we're going over all of these energy centers with my hands. So the energy comes through in a sort of beaming method. Um, so it is, my hands will sort of tell me intuitively where to go, where to stay, what to move around, um, but anyone can receive it um, and anyone can benefit from it. So usually um, Reiki, if you are experiencing anything from, you know, physical pain or mental, emotional pain, um, you know, from a, I would say from a broken bone to a broken heart, you know, or if you just need, if you're just drained, if your energy is just drained and you're tired and you're overworked, you know, um, and you just need a fine tuning or an energy upgrade, I think Reiki is a beautiful practice um, to incorporate and bring through. Um, so yeah, um, anyone can receive it and anyone can benefit from it. Um, I've personally never had anybody who hasn't benefited from it in some way. Um, it's just a beautiful healing method to bring the person back to themselves and to help a person find their full potential and you know open up any stuck or stagnant energy um, that's been sitting in any one of these chakras. So, you know, for instance, when we're experiencing tightness in the chest, that could be a heart chakra issue, that could be, you know, problems with maybe you just lost someone or went through a breakup or having um, trouble forgiving someone. Um, so it the energy sort of manifests into physical symptoms and the Reiki is a really beautiful process to help move that energy out and uh, return that light back to you. That universal life force energy is amazing. So yeah, here, um, just a little more themes. The crown, we have your intellectual, spiritual, and divine connection. The third eye um, is our intuitive, insightful, and uplifting center. The throat, um, communicative, calming, tranquil. So the heart space, um, loving, caring, nurturing, calming, confident, and open-hearted. Our solar plexus, our center, it helps to refresh and bring joy and peace. The sacral rejuvenates, releases, and motivates. And the base brings passion and excitement and more energy into our being. So, um, you know, sort of, I want to kind of go over characteristics of balanced chakras. So, um, you know, when our root chakra is balanced, we feel really centered and really grounded. Um, we kind of have unlimited physical energy um, and we definitely feel strong and healthy in our body. Um, and when the sacral is aligned um, and balanced, we definitely tend to be more friendly. Um, we can experience more of a sense of belonging or concern for others. Um, we're more creative and our sexual energy is healthy and strong when that chakra is balanced. Um, and the solar plexus, so when that's balanced, we definitely feel like we have a very strong self-worth and sense of power. Um, you know, we have self-respect for ourselves and for others as well. Um, and we tend to be um, more expressive and joyful and even more outgoing um, when that center's balanced, so that's really cool. Uh, the heart. When the heart chakra is perfectly balanced, we will experience, um, you know, more compassion and we may be more nurturing and protective, um, active in our community, uh, we might be more empathetic to others, um, 
and just, you know, overall feel very balanced within our being. And um, so moving up to the throat, when our throat chakra is perfectly balanced, we can be a good speaker. Uh, we can um, really tap into those musical or artistic gifts really well. Um, we have a good sense of timing, we feel centered, and definitely you feel more in the present when your throat chakra is balanced. And the third eye, you know, um, when that chakra is aligned, uh, you can feel more charismatic, uh, clairvoyant, you can definitely master yourself, uh, and it really helps with kind of releasing the materialistic aspect of a person um, and really bring you back to your psychic center. Uh, and then the crown is the be all end all when that is aligned and it's hard to align, you know, for our third dimensional brain sometimes, but um, when that is perfectly balanced, you know, you are just open to the divine realms and you have access to the unconscious and the subconscious. Uh, you can really tap into being a miracle worker. Um, you know, it sort of like transcends the laws of nature and, you know, brings us to our connection to this world and beyond. So, working with the sacral, or sorry, the crown chakra is really fun for me in a Reiki setting. So, now that I explained a little bit about um, the energy aspect of this presentation and Reiki and the chakra system, we are going to now weave uh, herbal remedies into healing those chakras, which is pretty much what I do. <laughs> so, um, you know, when we're thinking in terms of healing with plant medicine, um, these seven herbs that I'm about to go over are some of my favorites that I use in my practice with people just to kind of help bring and harness that energy into someone. So um, yeah, before I kind of go over all of uh, the herbs for each chakra, I just want to briefly mention that, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, there are tons of different things to know about herbs. You know, you have to know the person's constitution and if this herb's right for them, there's contraindications for many different herbs. And I will also say I'm not a doctor, you know, I didn't, um, you know, uh, go to med school and I don't have any sort of like medical degree. Um, so I can't diagnose anyone and, um, you know, I can't heal or cure any disease. Um, but I can express and, you know, teach the knowledge and wisdom I've gained from herbal remedies and energy work. Um, it's helped me, it's helped everyone I work with, so I could share that knowledge and wisdom, which is, you know, all I'm really intending to do here tonight, um, is just share some information and, you know, take it or leave it. But I hope you take something from it. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, there's all different types of herbs, you know, that do all different types of things. They have many different actions. So the herbs we're working with, since we're talking about the nervous system, most of the herbs that I'm going to list here are nervines and adaptogens. Um, so nervines, just it's in the name, they um, basically in a nutshell, nervines heal and nourish our nervous system. So these are the types of herbs we want to call to during times of stress. And adaptogens, you know, um, in a nutshell, just help our bodies adapt to stressful situations. Um, so yeah, a lot of these herbs are, you know, either one or the other or both. So um, yeah, returning back to the root, the base chakra, um, I love ashwagandha. It is like a very hot commodity right now. Um, a lot of people recognize ashwagandha. Um, it's a big seller in the tincture world and um, it is, uh, it's, it's very available to people, um, but it is for a reason. It really, really works. Um, and this is a picture of the plant, but we're actually using the root when we're, um, using it in a healing sense. Um, so the ashwagandha is a shrub that grows in India, Africa, and parts of the Middle East. And it's one of the most important herbs used in Ayurveda to help the body manage stress. 
So it's a super deep healing tonic uh, that is relaxing and nourishing to the body. So when our chakra is out of balance, when the root chakra is out of balance, we may feel weak, uh, unfocused, unmotivated, um, a lack of being or feeling grounded. Um, we may even be greedy. Um, so when we work with ashwagandha, our whole system receives this deep restorative energy to sort of help ground ourselves in the here and now. So, um, you know, it could very well bring a very calming um, sense to the being, um, a very grounding and relaxing energy to the body. Um, and yeah, it could definitely help you feel more safe and secure in your root, which is what we want um, when we're working with the root chakra. So establishing strength and healing in our root will definitely bring more clarity, clarity and focus into our whole being. Um, so yeah, this is very a very relaxing nerve being. So it's used a lot um, for male and female reproductive issues. So for fertility or libido, um, which makes sense when we're talking about the root. <clears throat> So the moving up to the sacral chakra, I love Damiana for working with the sacral. Um, it uh, is just such a beautiful friend of mine and uh, it really just kind of takes you, um, it stimulates the mind a little bit, but really takes you more into your body in an uplifting way. Um, so it's a shrub that actually grows in the West Indies, Mexico, and Central America. So pretty. Um, it's a well-known tonic that's, like I said, both stimulating and relaxing to the mind, um, the reproductive system, and the digestive system, which are all associated with the sacral uh, chakra as well. So this is a great ally for that. Um, so when our sacral chakra is out of balance, um, we might find ourselves perhaps a little aggressive, uh, overly ambitious, uh, lacking trust. Um, we may have a sense of fear or be burying emotions. Um, so Damiana is such a wonderful addition for those things. So anyone, especially anyone who's trying to heal any sexual trauma or dysfunction. I really, really love working with Damiana for that. Um, yeah, it'll help them sort of, um, it'll allow one to express their spirituality and creativity um, and feelings in a more uh, balanced and uplifting light. So we love Damiana. It is tonifying and stimulating as in nerving. So it's really good for the sacral. So I, this is not a nervine or an adaptogen. I just think it's ginger's really appropriate when connecting to our center um, because it's a mover and a shaker. It really moves and shakes things up and we kind of want it all to come from the, as above, so below, we want it to all kind of come in the center and support us. So um, ginger is native to Asia and the rhizome is widely used in uh, Asian culture. And here, so that's a picture of the rhizome. Um, it's excellent at moving stagnation and congestion in the blood and tissues. <clears throat> so an imbalance in the solar plexus could look like, you know, someone who's a little sluggish or feeling stuck, uh, maybe a little bit lost in where they're going with life, uh, maybe a little fearful of moving into and stepping into their power. Um, so that like ultimately affects our thinking um, and our heart in a way. So ginger is really great, like I said, at bringing blood flow and energy to the GI system, brain and cardiovascular system. Uh, when using ginger, all of the energy will just come together to empower a person's will and self-confidence really allowing them to step into their power uh, through healing the emotional self. So 
I love, 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 love ginger. I add it in like all my tea blends for an extra kick. Ugh. Now, when we're focusing on the heart, this is one of my all-time favorite herbs, all-time favorite plants. Hawthorn, it's used a lot when we're healing the heart energetically. Um, definitely has medicinal effects as well um, for the cardiovascular system. So I have two pictures here because the leaf and the flower we tend to use more when focusing on matters of the heart emotionally. Um, but the berries, although they have less a little bit less of a medicinal usage, still medicinal, not as much as the, the flower and the leaf, but um, the berries taste amazing. Um, you can eat them right off the tree. Um, you can make jams with them. Um, it just, you know, they're like little apples. They kind of really uh, add a sweet and sour taste um, to a tea that's really nourishing. Um, so Hawthorne is native to uh, Northern Europe, actually, and it was long incorporated in the Celtic holiday of Beltane, which is the pagan celebration for the spring equinox. They really emphasized Hawthorne uh, during that celebration. Um, so yeah, this plant's tremendous for congestive heart failure and high blood pressure. Um, there are some contraindications though, so if you're on any sort of heart medication, you definitely want to check with your doctor. Um, but in a tea, it can be really nice. Um, so yeah, the, the plant's actions are fitting in terms of, you know, the heart center being out of balance. And when it's out of balance, you know, maybe energetically, you know, we're going through some emotional trauma or physical pain. Um, you know, definitely um, when we're experiencing sadness, loss, or grief, Hawthorne is my best friend in times of that. If ever someone loses someone, I give them a blend of Hawthorne, Rose, and, Albindi and Albizia, which is, at Vital Ways, it's our, kind of our school triad, and it's just such an excellent ally for healing grief. Um, so yeah, um, it's a, it's a Nuravine. And you know, it's also like an antidepressant, so it brings a very nice, nourishing, uplifting um, quality to the heart space. Um, so yeah, definitely use it if you're experiencing any of those issues or just need to feel more empathy. Um, I really like to use it in um, community gatherings, you know, whether connecting with community or friends or family, I like to add Hawthorne in the TV and serve it to everyone. So our heart spaces are connected. Um, yeah. Ah, oh, one of my favorites. For the throat chakra, we have elecampane. And I don't know, it's just, when you look at it, it's just standing upright, so tall, and then you have all this beauty opening at the top. It just reminds me of someone like finding their voice and it, it flowing out um, into the crown. Um, so elecampane is a native plant um, from Northern Europe. And, um, you know, it's been growing in the United States for centuries. Um, so it really has many medicinal properties, um, but probably most historically has been used to heal um, respiratory infections and the bronchioles. Um, so, you know, um, bronchitis, pneumonia, you know, as herbalists, we tend to really call an alicampane in, in a blend for folks. Um, so energetically, it's just really supportive in moving uh, unwanted energy through us. So we can heal like our creative juices and really use our voice for good. Um, it's really good at just bringing your voice out. <clears throat> so yeah, when we're unbalanced in the throat chakra, you know, you may feel confused or you know you have a lack of expression um you know or you can't really speak up or maybe you're talking too much <laughs> um which is definitely a habit of mine um but you know it's ultimate strength is just assisting those who need to work more um on communicating their needs to themselves and to others so yeah, definitely turn to Ella Campaign for that. Okay. 
Okay, moving up to the third eye. I really love working with ginkgo. Um, this is a picture of ginkgo in the fall, which is when you wanna harvest the leaves. So the female trees produce berries, but the males do not. And I believe this is a male tree. Um, so yeah, you wanna wait till fall when the leaves are starting to turn from green to yellow to harvest the leaves for medicine. Um, I love it, it's so beautiful and it just really brings out those pretty fall colors. Gets you in touch with the season. Um, so yeah, it's, um, you know, it has a history of being used in Chinese medicine for a really long time because it's actually one of the oldest living species in the world. Um, so I also thought that's appropriate when working with the third eye because it's kind of bringing us back to our intuition. Um, so the history of the plant is important uh, and it, come, it just comes into play beautifully when working with the third eye. So it's actually, you know, an antioxidant as well and a mild stimulant. Um, so if we need any brain power, you know, or brain boost, um, it's a really great herb for that. Um, so it'll help with any third eye imbalances, which could be, you know, memory issues, um, poor vision even, uh, mental blocks, a lack of empathy or, uh, you know, obsessive behavior. Um, it um, is beautiful and a really helpful ally in gaining like clarity and wisdom um, to help you move through obstacles affecting that intuitive space. Um, yeah, it's also a really beautiful addition to add um, for meditation and dream work. I like to use it, which is perfect for the third eye. Um, yeah, this is a cognitive nerving, so really brings that goodness to our brain and third eye space. Last, but certainly not least, we have Gota Cola for the crown. Um, this is definitely in my top five favorite herbs. Um, it does so much for the physical and mental health of any human being. There's really no contraindication, so I highly recommend everybody get on Gota Cola. Um, but if you are on medication and stuff, check with your doctor. Um, but this herb, um, yeah, has been used in Chinese med medicine and Ayurveda uh, for mood, memory, and blood circulation. It can be used to help prevent many different diseases. So yeah, when we're working with the crown, we want to be a healthy body, healthy mind when we are connecting to the divine. So um, this is like an immune, to uh, immune tonic, cognitive enhancing and it's also an anti-anxiety herb. So, you know, when we do experience a lot of third dimensional stress and a lot of people who do connect to the higher realms, like different dimensions, um, can be a little spacey and airy um, and not completely grounded to earth. So um, Gota Cola actually uh, does a good job of kind of tying those two energies back into the crown and then into the body. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, when we're experiencing crown chakra imbalances, like, you know, we feel a lack of universal oneness, or, um, you know, we're experiencing maybe apathy or spiritual blocks, um, scattered thoughts and beliefs, you know, what is real <laughs> um, mentality. Uh, yeah, this herb is just a really beautiful ally and friend um, to bring wisdom to your brain and crown chakra while also assisting uh, your whole being in um, aligning with a very calm uh, sense of spiritual and self energy. Um, my teacher at my always, Chris Maka, calls go to cola monk in a mug and I can't think of a better name. So we use it in tea a lot. It's uh, really nice in a tea. It's actually my brain boost blend. Um, and it's a wonderful addition. One of my favorites ever. So yeah, that is, we're getting to the end here. Um, that is just, yeah, a combination of 
nervous system information and energy reiki work and herbs it's my favorite thing to talk about and to educate people on and um i'm really honored to work with the plants and people in a space like this um really grateful to those who share their time and energy with me um so yeah i'm, I'm just very very lucky to be doing this um and love to talk about it so thank you for having me here um if you want to contact further i'm definitely starting to do more talks in the world now that restrictions are lifting it's a you know very hopeful time um so i have a few things lined up and usually post things on my instagram and facebook i'm mainly on instagram so everything's at white river healings with an s um yeah, Instagram at White River Healings, Facebook, my email is whiteriverhealings at gmail.com. And then I have an Etsy shop where I do um, make a lot of herbal remedies. So I do everything from body oiling, which is a tremendous practice to incorporate in regulating the nervous system that I didn't talk about today. But I make uh, nervous system body oils and uh, healing salves, different tea blends. I definitely have a stressless tea blend that you're welcome to have. Um, just a bunch of beautiful adaptogens and nervines in that blend um, to nourish and heal the nervous system. Um, yeah, and all, I have an Etsy shop, you know, you can find that under White River Healings. And my um, product brand is Soul Sister Earth Medicine. So I'll be doing talks like this. Um, I may be doing hikes in the spring. I think it's going to happen. So look out for that. Um, I do farmers markets. Um, uh, near the Mount Hood area, so I do the Hillsboro, I do Happy Valley, I do the Sandy Farmers Market, so I'll always post um, on my website and Instagram when I'll be there, and I love to talk about all these things, so yeah, uh, I hope that you all gained something from this, and I really uh, appreciate you having me.